Hello and welcome. Please pause the video, read the problem, and try it on your own. Let's start by reading it together. Uh, it says, Miss Fox asked her class, is the sum, so we're adding here, of 4.2 and the square root of 2 rational or irrational? Patrick answered that the sum would be irrational. State whether Patrick is correct or incorrect. Justify your reasoning. So believe it or not here, you could just say, yes, he's correct. He is correct. And you could probably get away with just saying it's correct because we know that the sum of an irrational and rational number, this is the key, is always irrational. Now, but the thing about that answer is it doesn't really re re talk about anything. It just says, states a fact, which is really uninteresting. Um, so, so we can prove it. We can prove this to think about what's happening. Um, now, this is only applying to sums. There, things are different uh, with products and different combinations of irrational and rational and so forth. We're, we can prove this. So before we prove it, I guess we should just talk about for a moment what is a rational or irrational number. Um, so let's just mention that because that's, I think, is the key to understanding this question. Rational numbers, what are they? Well, rational numbers are the ratio. Look at the word rational. You see that word ratio right there? It's the ratio of two integers. So let's say A and B, where A and B are integers, a cool symbol for integers is this double Z, and, and B, sorry, and B is not zero. So let's break this definition down. Basically a rational number is any number that can be written as a ratio of two integers. Integers are positive or negative whole numbers. So we can have all kinds of examples here. We can have like one over two. One and two are both positive or negative whole numbers. And so therefore, this is a rational number. As a decimal, it looks like this, 0 0.5. Um, negative 5 over 7. Kind of an unfriendly fraction, but they're both integers. Uh, therefore, this is a rational number as well. And b cannot be 0, because that would mean you're dividing by 0, which we don't allow. That's undefined in mathematics, although we can do all kinds of fun stuff when we do allow it. We're not going to do that here. In general, um, aside from the fraction definition, you might... I've seen this before. When you're looking at decimals for rational numbers, you'll notice that they terminate. So that just means you have a rational decimal that can be written as a fraction or a ratio like this if you know that it terminates somewhere. So 0.123, for example, that's even, you know, as funky as the digits might be, if they terminate, if they end, as they do here, this ends with three, you know you can write this as the ratio of, in this case, these two integers, right, 123 over 1,000. This is 123 thousandths. So if they terminate, the decimals are rational. And if they have a repeating pattern, for example, like one-third, that's the ratio of two integers, that equals 0 0.33333 and so on forever. If there's any kind of repeating pattern, we can easily tell it's rational. So it's a repeating pattern. If the pattern is repeating, in this case, the threes are repeating. Um, therefore, we know that this is a rational decimal and it can be written as a fraction. So for cooler ones like 0.123 repeating, this can be simply written as the ratio of 123 over 999. Those nines really help us build fractions that generate repeating pattern digits um, in decimal form. So all of these numbers are rational because they can all be written as the ratio of two integers. So you see rational, think ratio. Irrational means it cannot be written as the ratio of two integers. So rational numbers cannot be written as the ratio, ratio of two, oh, I'll say the ratio of rational numbers, say that, oh, excuse me, integers. So classic examples might be numbers like pi, or the square root of a non-perfect square, like two, um, excuse me, the square root of a um, non-perfect square whole number, like two, or the square root of three. Um, these are all irrational. 
And if you try to write them as decimals, often what's spoken about is, uh, for example, with pi, right? If you try to write this as a decimal, you do squiggles here, squiggle equal sign, because it's not exactly equal to this decimal, one four, one five, nine, and so forth. If you try to write this out as a decimal, what you notice is that it does two things. It never terminates, so it never ends. And there's no repeating pattern. No repeating pattern. So again, so again, <laughs> the irrational decimal is, is really awesome because it never ends, it has no repeating pattern. Um, and just to be clear what we mean, like let's say you have this decimal, one, two, three, um, one, one, two, three, oops, one, 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 two, three, and so forth. This is also an irrational number. I mean, there's a clear pattern here. You can see we have one and then two, three, then two ones and two, three, and so forth, but the pattern is not repeating, right? It's constantly building the whole way. So this can never be written as a ratio of two integers. So that's some background context. Now let's talk about the proof on the proof side. How can we prove that the sum of a rational number, with the ratio of two integers, and a number that can't be written as the ratio of two integers, is irrational? What do we do? Well, here's what I like to do. To prove this, right, to get an advanced understanding of what's happening here, let's say x is some irrational number. Okay? And let's say we're that that, let's call it, I don't know, y is rational, and let's say that y equals a over b, you say it this way, where a and b are integers. That's a fast way of saying a and b are both integers. Let's also call z a number that's also rational, and let's use the number, the letters, excuse me, c and d, where c and d are both integers. So we're just saying here, hey, x is irrational, y and z are rational. So this is a proof by contradiction. Um, we're going to assume that x plus y equals z. In other words, we're going to assume that the sum of an irrational and a rational is rational. We're going to make that assumption, and then we're going to prove that this assumption is ridiculous. So that would mean x plus a over b equals c over d, because a over b is y and c over d is z. What would that also mean? Well, that would mean that x would equal the difference of c over d minus a over b, right? We take a over b from both sides. Now, how do we subtract these two? Um, well, here x would equal, if you remember to subtract two fractions, you need the same denominator. In other words, the least common multiple of d and b, which is d times b. So I need to multiply my first fraction by b over b, and then this fraction by d over d to get the same denominators. That would get me bc minus ad over bd. So this is what x equals. x equals this. Now what's the problem of this? Well, we know, and you could write this out, that bc, ad, and bd excuse me, are all integers. How do we know that? Because integers, integers are closed under multiplication. What does that mean? That just means when you multiply two integers, you're guaranteed to get another integer. That's what closure under multiplication means. It means if you multiply integers, you get more integers. So if that's true, BC, AD, and BD are all integers, the last thing to think about and I, I ran out of room, sorry, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna write this over here, is that, two more things to think about, that this is also an integer. BC minus AD is also an integer. You write like that. Uh, this E sign means an element of, so BC minus AD is an element of integers. You could say that's because the difference of integers is also closed. In other words, integers are closed under multiplication, and, I'm gonna be lazy here, write the Z symbol, integers are closed under subtraction. That means if you subtract integers, you get more integers. You can't get a number that's not an integer by subtracting. So what does this mean? This means that x is rational. Why? Because we have this numerator, which is an integer, a denominator, which is an integer, and the ratio of two integers, right, 
is an, a rational number, a rational number. So here, the ratio of these two integers must be a rational number. In other words, x must be rational. So our original assumption that x is irrational and the sum of an irrational and rational number is rational must be wrong. So therefore, you could say the sum of an irrational and rational number must be irrational. All right, so I hope this helped. This is some, some background to how you can explain what's going on and think about this um, in an algebraic way. All right, hope this helped.